you have children yourself, right? So clearly this topic is very close to your heart. Um, a different question for you though. You're a family man, you have children, you have a wife, you're living in the world of today. You haven't you know, gone to a forest somewhere and gone into the stage of vanaprastha and then in search of enlightenment, taking sannyas. You're living in the world of today. And arguably, we don't have any, as many forests as we once did. That's a completely different topic, how humans are inflicting this on our planet. But the question for you is, you deal with, you have responsibilities, you have duties, you have these interpersonal interactions every day. They come with the good, the bad, and the ugly. How are you able to exist on a spiritual plane while subsisting in this material world. So that's the key. That's the key, isn't it? Mm. In fact, a very good observation. In fact, uh, as you said, it's, a, it's a, a very personal question. In fact, I have a daughter and I've been married for good over 20 years now, but my spiritual journey started when I was 16, so over, mm. over three decades. Now, if you look at the very subject content the Sanatana Dharma, the principles of life and living. If you look at it carefully, are these principles of life and living only to cater to a small bracket of people, a small cross-section of people who can take to Vanaprastha or Sannyasa, who can become recluses, who can resort to the spiritual sanctuaries where they can pursue? If it's only meant for that point one, not percent of whole humanity of a billion, eight odd billion population, how many people can embark on to take a life of sannyasa, to renounce everything and embark? You said that your journey, spiritual journey started many, many mm. days earlier. I ask you, Abhilasha, now I will take you to the journey of sannyasa. Are you ready to drop everything and embark on it? How ready are you? I would actually love to, but we don't have that luxury. <laughs> don't have, but there's a big but. Yeah. So what we are saying is, how many people, what percentage of people are ready to do that? Hmm. So they all have their duties and responsibilities and obligations and various roles to play. Yeah. So this wisdom, this Sanatana Dharma, I would dare to say, is in fact more designed for grihasthas than sannyasis. It is catering to that 99.9% .9 of people, not just only the point odd person people. It's like when science invents a new vaccine, it tries to make it universally applicable to entire humanity. It's not only to a small cross section of people, isn't it? Then it's mm. not universally applicable. But when we call this wisdom as eternal principles, which have been from time immemorial, it has to accommodate every walk of life. So here is knowledge which is meant to be lived in the din and roar of the marketplace, not in the quietudes of meditation halls or in resorts getting away from the marketplace. No, mm. not in the spiritual retreats. It has to be practiced in the din and roar of the marketplace. I'm sure that gives our viewers a lot of hope. It, it is spent for that. Therefore, I, I would say I'm not doing anything extraordinary. I'm just trying to live these values in the din and roar of the marketplace. In fact, if I may quote the great Mahatma Gandhi, yeah. the father of India, in one of his famous quotes, he says, any fool can find Shanti in Shanti. Anybody can find peace in a peaceful environment. But only a man of character and wisdom will find Shanti in Ashanti. Mm. In the marketplace, when the stock markets are going up and down, when the emotions are rolling high, when things are not going your way, that is when you have to test yourself and apply spirituality. Yeah. Not, not in the ashrams, in the marketplace. In fact, in the Shastras, they give examples of Lord Shiva, the great Lord Shiva mm -hmm. sitting along with Parvati, mm -hmm. attending to the chores of the two children, Vigneshwara, Vinayaka and Subramanya, 
and you know those two brothers were constantly up to some mischief and quarreling mm -hmm. and the parents attending to their chores of attending the family affair this is the picture of detachment mm -hmm. it is not some sanyasi some swami sitting in the, in the woods they mm -hmm. they don't pictureize him as a man of renunciation in other contrasting example they take example of the great king janaka mm -hmm. king janaka was a king but he was a raja rishi he was a man of royalty but he had the values of a, a rishi hmm. so that unique combination of not just being a rishi but being a raja rishi so i am trying to be a raja rishi i am trying to go on doing my duties and responsibilities but with an attitude of detachment just yes. like the famous words of the scriptures is you must be like a a lotus leaf in water padma patram ivam bhasah a lotus leaf survives it's born it lives and dies in water but the the leaf is always fresh whenever you touch it because it the greasy surface on that leaf separates it from water hmm. so we must like try to be like a, a lotus leaf in water or as shakespeare says be an actor on the stage yeah all the world is a stage and all men and women are mere players they have the exits and entrances so just play a role and move on man and do it with a smile with a charm yeah that's all it is and we need to learn these skills in our good times right from what you were saying earlier rather than trying to imbibe it when things are already going bad it's too late I can't run to an insurance company when my building is under fire. Mm. It's too late. He says, "Better luck next time, my dear. This yeah. time you're not protected." Yeah. Right? In fact, uh, Vilasha, I'm reminded of uh, the famous uh, verse from a mantra from the Mundaka Upanishad. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an authority of, to what I said that this knowledge is meant more for. grahasthas then sanyasis mm -hmm. not to exclude them but it's all inclusive it's not just exclusive you know if i may chant the yes, the yeah. upanishadic mantra it says shaunako havai mahashalo angirasam vidhi vadhu pasanna papracha it says shaunako vai mahashal so he says shaunaka was the famous householder Mm -hmm. who approached angirasa the guru with due orthodoxy okay so the vedas themselves glorify a householder as a famous householder who went up to the guru mm -hmm. to seek this knowledge he they don't talk of a recluse going and seeking knowledge a householder what made him famous was he was in it but yet completely detached mm. that's the authority to give you uh, a yes to what we are saying it's not my imagination the yeah. shastras are endorsing it okay, okay.